that's how I prioritize work. First come, yeah. first served, never financially, unless it's, you know, if, if Sting phones or Elton John phones, and I'll be gone. <laughs> I'm glad you've given <laughs> us your sort of pecking order in terms of when you'll, you know, do that. Power to Live More with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organisation, well-being, energy and resilience. I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello. My name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter and today Joe is interviewing Phil Wilson. Joe and Phil met at a Kent Business networking event where they were both speaking about their respective personal and business journeys. Phil got everyone in the room playing boom whackers and mentioned that he offered such sessions for conferences. Never one to miss an opportunity, Joe invited him to speak at the Engage for Success conference in 2018 and they've been friends ever since. Phil is a professional drummer drum teacher and percussionist, a speaker and rhythm event facilitator. Touring as a, mu- as a musician has taken him all over the UK and overseas, performing venues as diverse as small clubs and pubs, to major theatres, arenas, TV and the opening ceremony of the 2012 London Olympic Games and he's looking forward to an arena tour in 2019. After overcoming a lifelong stamina in 2013 at 53, Phil started speaking on behalf of a national breast cancer charity. This developed into him becoming a motivational speaker and presenter of rhythm events for corporate, educational and community projects. Inspirational Rhythms was launched in 2015 and he is now an ambassador for Cancer Research UK. This has taken him to Parliament to give presentations and live TV interviews on national BBC TV news and local outlets. Back to the studio. Today I'm interviewing Phil Wilson of Inspirational Rhythms and Phil and I uh, met at a business event, oh I think probably about 18 months ago now and he's since come and worked with us Engage for Success and perhaps uh, we'll talk a little bit about that at some stage as well so well done not well done welcome Phil great to have you with me <laughs> hello how are you <laughs> good and also well done on the work you did with Engage for Success because it was particularly good <laughs> oh bless you that's sweet thank you <laughs> so tell us a bit about uh, who you are what you do and crucially where you do it right my, my name is Phil Phil Will Will, Will take two my name is phil wilson um i'm a percussionist and drummer uh and i do it all over the country now as though you think drums and percussion are are all the same in in my industry or in the genres that i work in uh when we refer to drums it's sat down playing when you refer to percussion it's standing up with congas and, and bits and pieces um, along along the conga and percussion route i'm working on four shows at the moment, which is touring mainly in the UK, um, and the drum set work I do UK and overseas. Uh, it's fairly full on. It's really full on. I, I follow along on Facebook as to where you are and what you're doing, and I'm always uh, in awe of uh, not only how much work you do, but how much travelling you do in in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, it, it's in fact that should be in my passport. You know, what what's your occupation? Uh, I travel. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I travel all day, hit stuff, and then go home. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you've had some ridiculous sort of runs of days. I remember, I don't know, you were up in Glasgow and you were staying in like Manchester, and then you were off to Cornwall or something. I don't know. They are just like it, madness. It, it, yeah, it goes it goes mad. Um, what I'm doing at the moment, because I'm on, I'm on all these shows, I'm I'm not on the shows full time. Um, they are established touring productions and when they get the larger stages uh, they want to enhance it with with stuff and and I get the call to load the stage with percussion and and do 
do do what I do. So I'm not with the touring party. So I'm not right. going on the tour bus. Uh, my my gears. I, I take my own my own gear. Although there is help and crew when I actually arrive at places. I am most of the work I'm doing this year. Uh, I am self driving. Um, so yes, it can be tiring. So you do have to pace yourself, and you do have to plan. Otherwise, you will go bananas. Yes, yeah. And um, tell us a bit about what you did with Engage for Success. Um, we got the room hitting plastic tubes together. Uh, <laughs> and they're not called plastic tubes. They've got a very funky name. Exactly. What are they called? They're, they're called boom whackers. Um, and and it, and it works on the on the same sort of idea as musical hand bells. Um, they're all different colours. So we got six. Uh, engage for, on Engage for Success, we used uh, six tubes, and they yeah. come in various lengths, and therefore make different notes. So we we handed, I think, two weeks to everybody. So we had two hundred people in the room, um, and you can get them clipping or uh, banging these together, making various notes and rhythms, and you can get a whole room of two hundred people playing six different rhythms at the same time in about in about sixty seconds, mm. and just to see the smiles on people's faces. Is, is incredible because they're all of a sudden they're part of a huge orchestra, something that they've never done before. And and it, I just love seeing people realise this sounds great. Oh, hang on, I'm part of it. Yeah, It's lovely. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I did great. Then. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. So tell us a bit then about um, why you do what you do. So you, you travel around the country. I think you actually, yep. did you say that you teach the drums as well? So um, you do I, I, I do. I've got a studio. It's called Medway yep. Drum Studio where we actually teach. But I had mm -hmm. to make a, a, a sort of heart-wrenching decision in March this year. I had to stop teaching for a while. The live work got so busy. Um, I started, first of all, to become unreliable. I had to cancel the other lessons because although I rarely worked on a Monday on a live show Mondays are generally travel days or fly homes so I'd be getting back in the studio too late to teach so I was letting people down um, and I didn't like that I wanted to be 100% reliable um, so I spoke to my pupils and their parents explained the situation said look you know I'm gonna have to put, put I'm gonna have to put put this on hold because I am a working I'm, I'm, I'm a working player and I want yeah. to play as much as I can and ev everybody was absolutely fine with it they were brilliant uh, in fact, some of the students come come come, come to the uh, gig gigs now as well, so it's nice. Yeah, 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 lovely. So yeah, so tell us why you do what you do then, because I mean that's an interesting thing that you you have have a business or had a business that you've sort of um, I guess put on ice a bit because of the the live shows, which is what yeah. you want to do. And and you know the life of a musician. We in fact we had a musician on uh, a few weeks ago, and you know it, it's as you say you have to sort of take the work when it comes, and it's you know, feast or famine a bit, isn't it? So <laughs> tell us why you do what you do. <laughs> um, the reason that musicians do it, or I do it, I absolutely love it. You could not do the job I do if you didn't love it. Um, to actually wake up and think, oh, I've got to go to Glasgow today, or I've got to go to Dubai tomorrow or something. You know, if, if you didn't like what you did, you wouldn't do it. And when you're learning an instrument, I suppose more. I suppose any kind of instrument, whether it's a, a rock, blues, country, or, or violin, or something, you always imagine you're playing in front of thousands of people. Um, I'm doing that week in, week out, and I get paid for it. Um, and it's a privilege. It's hard. It's blimmin' hard work, Joe. But it's a privilege to to come off um, and and the audience go bonkers and think, "Yep, yeah, you've been part of that. You've helped them have a fantastic night." And that, that's why I do it, because I, I get, I get enjoy, I'm very selfish. I, I want to get me time out of things, and I want to enjoy what I'm doing. And I absolutely adore what I'm doing. And I'm very fortunate to be working with some very good players at the moment. It's, 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 it's a right royal hoot. <laughs> <laughs> and so expand a bit about how you've ended up where you are now, because you, you had have the – um as you say the business that that you've sort of had to yeah. move away from um but you've also done quite a lot of inspirational speaking in recent years and so you yeah. know life has changed quite a lot over the last few years so tell us a bit well, more about that i think i think we might need about three podcasts so, so, yeah so, do the quick one. version <laughs> <laughs> um, i've also been interested in drums for first of all i mean when i was when i was at school 
I started playing drums, I think I was about six when I got my first drum, drum set. So I've always been interested in drums. So if you can imagine that is now set along a track, learning how to play drums. Parallel to that was me as a youngster with a stammer. Um, we had a bit of an incident in Aden. My father was in the Royal Engineers and there was an incident which uh, experts believed was a contributing factor to my speech because I'm, I'm thinking about it, I'm stuttering now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks for that. I haven't stammered for about six months. <laughs> um, it, and it, we, I, had, I had speech therapy and we did all the counselling, etc. But it just did, didn't work. For some reason, it did not work. While this was going on, I went through school. Through school, I was teased and bullied and punched because I had a stammer. It was, it was horrendous. I absolutely hated school uh, because of this. But I carried on playing, playing drums. Um, left school, variety of jobs. In 1985, um, I turned pro as, as a drummer. Uh, somebody phoned, I just left the retail industry and somebody phoned me up on a Friday and they said, what are you doing next week? Do you want to come to Switzerland for a, a month? <laughs> like, a you said, yeah, like you do. Like you do. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll have some of that. <laughs> so, well, that I can't believe you said yes so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I'll check my diary. There's me getting snow blind. <laughs> You know, <laughs> going through all the blank pages and, and I was off and it went from Switzerland. I then went to well, Norway, all over Germany, Holland, Belgium and the UK. And it's full on. And it, and it hasn't it hasn't really stopped. I've had, I've had some quiet moments um, with with the drums where I went back. I, I got I got a HGV driving license. And I learned to drive big, big, horrible lorries. Um, and I did that as a part time job. But, but playing has always been part of it. And then to rush forwards to about 2009, uh, my partner Sarah was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, we went through the treatment together. She is now what, nine years clear, now coming up to 10 years clear. But during her treatment, I started to take a massive interest in breast cancer awareness. Uh, I ran the marathon for London Marathon for breast uh, for breakthrough breast cancer. I did the Ride London 100 for Cancer Research UK, so I was fairly active. And uh, again, or oh, everything runs parallel. There's so many things going on. I wish I had a simple life, but this is just how things are going. <laughs> um, yeah. I opened I opened Medway Drum Studio in in 2013, and to to help promote the studio, I ran loads of adverts in local papers and community mags. And on the back of one of those adverts, um, somebody phoned me from BNI and they invited me to BNI. I didn't know what um, networking was. I never heard the phrase before. I certainly didn't know what half past six in the morning was. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the time you normally, go, yes, the time you normally go, go to an airport, not getting up and having a shower to go to a meeting. Um, and I arrived at the very first one when they said, oh, you need to stand up and introduce yourself and talk about your business. I, said, oh, I can't do that. I've got a stammer. Um, and I said, oh, no, have a go, have a go, you'll be fine. And I stood up and I wasn't fine. It was horrendous. But that's where, where one of my philosophies has started. I bought quite a few business development books and personal development books. And there was a phrase that, 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 that I use now. Um, I think I, I may have reworded it somehow, but it, it goes along the lines of um, turn a negative experience into a positive goal. Or positive question. So I, I sat there, and yes, I was embarrassed. I was sweating. I, you could feel my face burning with embarrassment. I was red. It, I hated it. I wanted to run out of the room. And I said to myself, well, that didn't work. What can I do to help me speak better in public? And I then started to try and get answers to that question. And I went on to uh, YouTube. Which is the week I asked if I could go back the following week. I went back the following week. Um, I asked if I could uh, come back. I said yes. Cause what I didn't want to do was run away from it. I said, okay, yeah. I've had enough of this. I've, I've been doing this for 50 odd years. It, it's going to stop. It's going to stop now. Um, and I watched loads of videos and they talked about practice, 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 practice in front of a mirror, which I did. Went back the following week, stood up. No, it didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work. The reason it didn't work is because when you're practicing, you're on your own. And when yeah. you're on your own, you generally don't stammer. Um, yeah. Or you can put – so it, I then looked for other techniques. I heard about the King's Speech, a film that I'd avoided, like the plague, because what I didn't want to be is reminded about the fact that I had a stammer. And I yeah. avoided uh, – what's that Ronnie Barker TV programme, Open All Hours. Oh, yes, um, yes. I, I absolutely hated that. I, my, my dad used to enjoy it, but I used, I used to go out of the room because it was, a lot of the jokes, to me, were bullying because they're laughing at the fact he was stammering. 
yeah and, yeah. and i and and I, yes i have got a sense of humor but that wasn't for me at that time was not funny mm. um but i got the king's speech and i started to develop bits and pieces off of there it started to improve um and i then came across a hypnotherapist called tim box and i said to him if you ever you know spoken to anybody with a stammer and he said no not at all just would you fancy having a go he said absolutely so we had a go the first session was a complete waste of time it's not tim's fault i fell asleep uh, <laughs> when you put a musician in a darkened room in a comfy chair he is going to be out for the count uh, and i was gone he said i think you went a bit deep phil and <laughs> i don't think it worked so i had to book absolutely yeah, it was a story to gave away so i had to go back the following week and it was that was it done i didn't feel any different but um i made the decision to, to join uh bni for a year just to get weekly practice of standing up and speaking in front of people um and it, it, it worked a treat and on the back of that i got involved with breakthrough breast cancer um, i became a speaker for the charity um, and a campaigns ambassador which meant going to parliament and doing presentations for mps and members of the House of Lords and uh, people in the, in the NHS and that kind of thing. Um, and then that has moved me on now to being uh, an ambassador for Cancer Research UK, which I do the same thing. I stand up and I talk on behalf of the charity. Um, and then while this was happening, another parallel, um, I went to a, a rhythm event that my cousin's husband did where he arranged drum circles in this school and I helped him out. And I'm there watching all these individuals having an absolute ball. And I thought, oh, I could monetize this. <laughs> so, um, so then Inspirational Rhythms was born. I, I looked into doing it in, on a, 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 for, for corporates and for education and for community. And those are the three main areas we go into. Um, corporate and community, it's only rhythm events. But for, sorry, for, for community and education, it's only with them events but for corporate we do the talks i've got a couple of talks one of which i'm doing one of which i'm doing tomorrow is called small steps um and there's another one we do called changing beliefs but we use rhythm as a backbone to the presentation wherever mm -hmm. i go there is, will always be drums there will always be boom whackers or something there'll always be you know cowbells and some sort of nonsense to shake and have a laugh with because it's all about breaking down those barriers. The barriers I had with my stammer was breaking down the barriers, the fear of speaking in front of people. But taking mm -hmm. it a small step at a time, I was able to pretty much sort it out. When I'm, okay, at the start of this, this chat, I had a few sort of slips, but it, it's, it's going to happen occasionally, especially when I'm tired. And and I have to confess right now, I'm really, really, really tired. Because yeah, you, of the you last sent me a message. Of... You said you've got gig lag. I love that yeah, phrase. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> But it's yeah. it's uh, and it's yeah that so that that's where the public speaking comes from mm -hmm. and I've been developing that and working on it and I've now started writing a book about public speaking but it's I've only been speaking for four years so mm -hmm. what do I know about public speaking uh, nothing but I have been to so many presentations and so many presentations presentations have gone horrendously wrong for one reason or another I'm um, learning from other people's mistakes and. It's, it's based it's really based for beginners um the sort of stage i am is how you want to present yourself how you want to arrive at a place arrive on time and i i, I, I run it parallel with that of a performance of a musician that you prepare for your performance so a, a presentation a talk and i believe whether it's a 60 second presentation at a networking event or, or a half hour or a, an 18 minute ted talk um it's you have to prepare it. You have to know what's, what you're going to say, not necessarily word for word, but have outlines. Uh, and, and the book that, I've, that I'm working on is all based around that. I'm hoping it's going to be lighthearted. Um, and and I really want it to help people who think, oh, I can't do that. I'm not going to speak. Because I started mm -hmm. to get one of the, one of the words, I, the phrases I used to hear an awful lot in networking events. I'd ask somebody what they're doing for their 10-minute presentation. And they'll say, yeah, oh, I don't know, I'm going to wing it. And my jaw would hit my yeah. jaw would hit the floor. I mean, if 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 you put membership costs, travel and breakfasts, networking events, networking organisations can be up to a thousand pounds a year in, yes. in real in real cost when you put everything together. And if if it's if you've got forty fifty members, you're going to get one chance a year to do a ten minute presentation. That's costing you a thousand pounds. Yeah, and yeah. just going to wig it, and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm 
I, I sound fairly aggressive about this, but I, 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 did, I did used to I used to get the right royal lamp over it. Um, but I think it's treating the audience with a little bit of disrespect. You're just going to go up and blag your way through it, and also you might miss some fantastic opportunities. I've seen people stand up on presentations that do a quick sixty seconds, and they'll say, "You know what? I've, you, you know my name. You know what I do," and they sit down. Yeah, you know, and I've seen that. I've seen that a number of times. And there's, uh, yeah, there may well be visitors in the room who might have money to pay for the service that that person is, does, but they don't know. No, exactly. So this book is all it's all about that. It's all about being blatantly obvious and polite, clean shoes. You know, make sure your felt pens are going. I'm going to run out. You have got spare batteries for the audio visual changer. You know, you, that you're really, really prepared all the way through. Yeah. So that's how I got involved in in, in the teaching. I'm doing an event tomorrow in Kent, so it's a nice local one for me. Lovely. So that'll be Lovely. good. And yeah. then Thursday, yeah. I'm off to Sheffield with a with a show in Sheffield. Well, I, I see I Sheffield's down. the best place. All the best people were born in Sheffield. Oh, that'll be you then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yes, that's true. Oh, there you are, yeah. Uh, and then I'm off to Huntstanton and somewhere else, but I've forgotten right now. Uh, and it's so, pretty full on now to Christmas. Yeah. So that really, you know, that, that's that's a great sort of um, filling in some of the gaps about what you do and why you do it. What now comes to mind is how do you prioritise what you do? Because your life is um, full, <laughs> but also um, varied to the point of you really don't know, uh, you know, from one day to the next one week to the next where you're going to be and what sort of work you're going to be doing how do you make that happen and you know you you're you're married and and um you know I know that you have a a, a, a sort of lovely partnership with with your wife around your work as well so how do you make all that happen and work for you well, most of professional drumming and percussion engagements you get a lot of notice I've, I've already got dates in my diary for 2020 so right. you, 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 yeah. you get a lot of notice um, and it, the algorithm for how I choose things is, is almost as complicated as Facebook's. Um, it's, <laughs> for, first of all, it's first come, first served. Full stop. Yeah. If somebody phones up um, and I've got a date, sorry, I, you know, I can't do that. I'm working at Sansa so, Sanso. So. Um, if, if I'm working with a semi-pro act or an amateur act, a local, a local pub or something, um, I'll say, yes, I'm free at the moment, but if something comes in, I will have to take it. And they're yes. absolutely cool. Um, and I've, I've, I've only ever done one professional gig when I've had a day's notice. When somebody, we've had a phone call from the agent and they've had a cancellation um, at a fest festival and we've just packed up and gone. Yes. Um, so it does happen from time to time. Um, I've, I've never cancelled a gig for financial reasons. Um, because the, the, the corporate team building events are very lucrative. Um, but if I've got a gig in there that someone's expecting me to turn up at and they're relying on me, I will go and do it. I won't yeah. go, I won't, I won't phone up the day before and say, oh, by the way, I've been offered this 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 thing. It's worth four times what I'm earning for you. So see you later. You know, my, my reputation is worth a lot more than a couple of quid. Um, mm. So so I won't I won't cancel. Uh, if, if Elton John calls me, then that'll be a different. <laughs> <laughs> then that'll be. Then I'm sure they would understand. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> it, 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 I really yeah. have to take each one as it comes, but generally it, it's it is first come first served. Mm -hmm. um, I have. I was taken off one show last uh, earlier this year. Um, I was booked in with a with a with a show called The Rocket Man, which is phenomenal. The guy does an Elton John. Um, the band's amazing. This bloke's hysterical. Um, and the uh, uh, company that owns four or five, well, I think about 16 shows actually, phoned me up and they said, could we have you on the Magic of Motown show? And I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that because I'm booked out with Rocket Man. And they yeah. said, oh, we'll, speak to you. We'll, we'll, we'll speak to them, see if we can move you. And I said, well, I can't do it. I, I, so I can't make that phone call. Um, no, if you want to make no, the phone so, call, yeah. you can go ahead. And they made the phone call and the guy I was working for completely understood. He was on my side. So it's fine. Um, so I went to I did the Magic of Mo's Challenge show at one of the race courses. I forget there, but five thousand people there, bonkers. So wow. yeah, so yeah, it's um, yeah. that, that's how I prioritise work. First yeah. come, first served. 
never financially unless it's, you know, if, if Sting phones or Elton John phones and I'll be gone. <laughs> I'm glad you've given us your sort of pecking order in terms of when you'll, you know, do that. So, yeah, so yeah. what about actually getting done what you need to get done? I mean, you've said, you know, you've got that work, you've you've got your speaking, you've got your corporate work, you're writing a yeah. book. How do you, you know, when you get up in the morning, how do you know what you're going to do for that day and make sure you get the um, things done? Being, to get done? Being, being, being a musician, you have a lot of downtime. Um, so writing the book is not a problem. Um, because I would, you know, I'm always on site early. G generally, my arrival time is two o'clock, but I'm always on site at one o'clock. So I've got an hour there to start with, um, and then as soon as I can get uh, the, the, the crew to get access to where I'm going to be on the stage, my gear is being set up, or I'm setting it up, or we're doing a combined version. Then I've finished at three. Sound check's not till half past five. That's another two and a half hours. Sound check finishes at six. Show's normally seven thirty or eight. That's another two hours. So yeah, there, there's lots of downtime. So as far as writing the book is is not a problem. Um, as far as knowing what I'm going to do the day, on the actual day, if it's a gig day, that's the only thing in the diary is that show. I never mix it up. It's two. I know people that do two jobs, um, and they arrive late and they get a bad reputation, and it's just not worth it. Uh, so I will only ever do one thing. And my and my day is planned out to the minute when I get up. Uh, Sarah and I, have to, <laughs> Sarah and I have developed this thing called the Book of Truth. Now when <laughs> when you do a when you when you do a tour, uh, if you've got a tour of say thirty dates, the the promotion company uh, or the tour manager will present you with a booklet of the. It'll be, it'll be in show order, so page one is show one. Every every page will have the parking details on the hotels the. Uh, the gig information it's always wrong so so we <laughs> <laughs> so we we, we, we started for a minute. <laughs> so we we started to call that the book of lies <laughs> so, so uh and, and, and on, a, on, a, on a tour, have you asked a question where the answer was in the book of lies? You've got, you've got to find a fiver that used to go towards the, the, the cruise Christmas party. Um, <laughs> but we've developed one called the book of truth uh, for the work for my own personal jobs. So yeah. at the top of that sheet, it'll have it'll have the show name, for instance, Fast Love, which is the George Michael tribute, which are going into arenas next year. Um, it's got some huge gigs coming up. So it's, it's amazing. Um, have, have, the, have, the, have the date, the venue, the full address of the venue, have the postcode of the venue. It'll have the postcode of the loading bay um, because the loading bay is never in uh, the venue. As we because know from the Engage Success event, if you remember, it was... Um... Uh, right around the back, wasn't it? Was it around the back? Yeah, the um, bit, uh, I can't remember, uh, Queen Elizabeth Centre in London, wasn't it? And yes, you had to go on a bit of a magical mystery tour. <laughs> well, there, there was one, there was one venue this year that I turned up at. I won't say where it was, um, and the sat nav said you have arrived at your destination, and I was about two miles from the venue, <laughs> and I was outside. Of, I was outside of a general post office. Um, so I said to one of the guys, I said, "Where's the theatre?" Oh, it's down so and so and so. Follow these signs. So I followed the signs eventually found the loading bay and i said to the, to the crew I said the the postcode is two miles away they said oh yeah we know <laughs> I said, well, why don't you let people know then but that that address is the address that the mail for the theater goes to so that's the postcode that's on their website so no, there must have been loads of imagine the tour buses and articulated lorries all pulling up outside this, this post office. So where do we where do we unload, mate? You know, yeah. We got we got we got fourteen tons of equipment. Can we have it on your doorstep? You know. Um, so, but I'll, on my so I'll, it'll have the venue. It'll have right down to what time I leave the house breaks off, because if I have a four hour journey, and this is in my speaking book as well about arriving on time. If I have a four hour journey, I'll add an hour then 10 minutes per hour, and then I'll count back to the time I'm due to leave. So my, my leave home time would be sort of, I don't know, 7.30 or something. That's yeah. what time I leave home. That's not what time I leave the house to get in the van and get comfortable. That's breaks off. And it is that regimented. And I've <laughs> never been late for a show. Yes. Never, yeah. ever been late for a show. And if I'm a bit early, I'll pull in for coffee somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, know, I, I know people that uh, will allow three hours for a three-hour journey and wonder why they're an hour and a half late. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah but yeah. I've never had that. Yeah. I've never, never had that. And, and I'm, I'm proud of that. And it's then in some some days I'll leave even earlier. If I've got to go north over the Dartford Crossing, um, I'll, I'll add another half an hour on. Mm -hmm. Because in the morning, especially in the morning, sort of half six, half seven, 
the Dartford Crossing, if, if those of you who live, live who don't know the south of England, um, sort of east of London, there's this river called the Thames, and this big bridge <laughs> goes over it, and it's always jammed with traffic, and you can wait for an hour uh, yeah, to get through yeah, that, and exactly. still pay for the privilege. Yeah, queuing exactly. Up for an hour and a half. So, um, so yes, yeah, so if, if I yeah. get straight off, I'll pop in to Costa's on Lakeside, which is right next to the tunnel, for coffee. Mm. I'm, not, mm. I'm not in a panic to get anywhere, and I'll always, you know, leave leave plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. So that's some of how you make sure you get done what you need to get done. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna use breaks off as one of my phrases <laughs> for my leave times in future. Um, breaks off. <laughs> and and I love the the fact that you're using pockets of time, which it's funny. I was in France a couple of weeks ago, and I was saying to them. They said, oh, you work all the time. And I said, no, I don't work all the time. If I did, I wouldn't be here. Um, mm. But when I am here and I've got pockets of time, I need to take that opportunity. Otherwise, I can't spend the time with you walking and talking French and everything else. And I found out the French don't say um, pockets of time. They say les temps morts. So dead time is what they use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't know what I was talking about. I was talking about pockets, les poches de temps or whatever it was. Um, <laughs> so you're using the pockets of time um, yes. and obviously writing, you're writing your book. Um, what about um, tools or apps? Because you're out and about and stuff, do you use technology to help with that? Oh, um, not so much with, with getting around. Um, there's, there's a few. I mean, I've got Google Diary I use. I use that because Sarah, my, my wife, can get access to it. And yeah. if anything comes in, she sticks it straight in, even if it's an inquiry about a family day or, or something. If, we, if, we, if we've been invited out, it goes straight straight in the diary. Um, I use Wonderlist, which is a very basic uh, uh, to-do list, really. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's, it's one up from a piece of paper. When you've done it, you cross it off. Um, <laughs> and it can uh, you can you know, put various categories on there. Um, I use Canva uh, for Instagram for inspirational rhythms. Uh, my other apps that I use fairly very frequently, I think it's Airbnb and hotel brand apps, um dropbox i use uh, there's a, a one for uh, musicians called four score which displays pdfs of the music you're playing um that's sort of in the, in the industry special and then my other apps that i use quite a lot are all food based <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> so uh, a lot of I mean, it's just weatherspoons app for, for for instance most theaters are in the in the middle of town so too are spoons and they you know okay it's not a gourmet meal but it's good value and yeah and they serve they sometimes serve these things called vegetables which you can't generally get when you're having fast food and stuff um so <laughs> i so and, and after a sound check if you finish the sound check at six o'clock there's only an hour and a half to go before you need to get back or even an hour before you need to get back to get changed which i lovingly call silly clothes time so it's um so in, in that hour you go to a weather spirit and then around the theaters the pubs and restaurants start to get busy about 6 30 um and, it, and the system at some of weather spoons is you go and you find your table you then go to the bar you order your order your drink order your food come back and someone's nicked your seat so with the <laughs> yeah. with, with with the app you can go plonk yourself down and then just place your order on on the app, and it, and that's why I use the apps for that. And we don't always go out as a as, as a show group. Sometimes you go out on your own. You might be meeting friends, or you just might want to go somewhere odd on your own. You know, there's no you don't have to go out with everybody all the time. Um, so yeah, so that's those are the apps that, that I use. So it's really yeah, diary but... lists and eating. Are my, <laughs> <laughs> my three <major> <laughs> So talking about uh, the eating and, as you say, the vegetables thing, how, how do you keep yourself oh, yes. healthy? Because it strikes me that your your lifestyle, because of all the travelling and, and so on, it could be the most unhealthiest. So how do it you... Can. Planning, sure planning, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. planning, planning, planning. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I run checklists like, like airline pilots do um, to make sure I've got everything I need, I know where I'm going, um, and the rest of it now if i'm going to go to say sheffield next next where well, on thursday i'm going to, going to uh, sheffield my first arrival postcode will not be the venue my arrival postcode will be either on morrison's garage because i get I, I haven't bought petrol off the service station for about a year now right. um, and it saves me about 14 pounds a tank um wow. by getting supermarket yeah man it's about, it's about 700 pounds a year i save just by you know, not get not finding myself short and having to go to a garage on a motorway. 
Mm. Um, so I'll fill up there. And it depends on the order these come between the venue and um, and the garage. Um, I'll go to a, a, a carving like a Bernie Inn or something like that. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll have I'll have lunch there. Uh, I, I won't eat out of a cardboard box or paper bag. Uh, it's not <laughs> a it, it's not a snob thing. It, it's a, I want to sit down and relax and enjoy this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you sit down with a plate with a with knife and fork. You, you eat slower. You don't have so much of a panic. Um, I, I think I tweeted a, a, a photograph of a, of a cup and saucer the other day. Oh, well, you were in an amazing <laughs> – no, you did something where you were in a hotel, wasn't it? Like a, a chain hotel, but it was a gorgeous view. I can't remember where Oh, you that were. was Lockerbie. That was Daisy oh, in Lockerbie. Yes. Yes. 30 quid for a yeah. room and you're by this huge lake with mountains in the background on a balcony. I know, I stay at Days Inn at like Peterborough and it's a flipping yeah. service station. <laughs> yeah. Well, m most or all Days Inn are on service stations, which is one of the reasons I use them because there's always somewhere to park safely and yeah. there's always there's always something open to get a coffee or something to eat. Yeah. Some of the yeah. other chains come in about the similar price, come in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and also you're not, you haven't travelled too far off your route. You haven't got no. to go. You'd have to go no. into town, um, spend another thirty quid on a, on a hotel, you know, more expensive. Then you got to fiddle your way out of that town the next day to get yeah. back to where you started. Whereas you know, so that's why I use those. And and having to have making sure I get regular time to, to eat slowly and take take care of myself, uh, yeah. because in in in, in nineteen eighty five I put on two stone in a tour because I was just wow. eating rubbish. Wow. I was just eating yeah. nonsense and fast food, and and now I'm pretty much I'm a little bit overweight, but I stay pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how I look. That's what I ask myself. Planning again, making sure I've got time to eat. Yeah. This is this is all music to my ears. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love all your strategies and and regimes for for all this stuff. It's just uh, it's, it's, well, you have to, you have to stay fit. I mean, I I I can't afford to get a cold. No, no. You no, know, because I, I, I can't phone these jobs in. You no, know, I, I have no. to, I, I have to be there. Um, and if we can just quickly mention my list, because we don't have a laugh with the lists. Again, it, it is like a, a checklist. If I'm last two weeks ago, I had five, six shows on the bounce across four different productions. So I had to have the equipment for all four productions, plus yeah. stage clothes for those four productions all loaded and they, I load things in the van and the order in which they come out. So I, I don't use the same percussion rig for fast love as I do for the rocket man. There's, there's, still, there's a couple of bits, a few extra bits and pieces I use for the shows. And I was on a mud show, which I used my basic drum set and I was doing, a, a, I was, I was helping out the drummer on fast love. So I was doing a drum set gig on fast love. So I needed more equipment for that. So there's four different arrangements. And I've got a loading list on the van of what goes. So this all comes off the book of truth because all this is on the book of truth for each gig, what I'll need. Yeah. And yeah. that transfers to another form which, which pins on the back of the van. So I, I check stuff in. Um, and even the boxes in the van have checklists of what goes in those boxes. So I don't forget <laughs> stuff. I mean, I've, I've, in my personal, you'll love this, in my personal bag, uh, which goes into every hotel and every show. I've got two boxes in there. One, one, I, one I call my charger box, and it's got and there's a list on it. It's got my phone chargers, uh, my extension leads. I've got two three meter phone charge leads and an iPad lead charger yeah. because yeah. you know hotel plugs are always miles away from the bed. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I, <laughs> I know that. Yeah, so I'm thinking of everything. Um, and Euro, I've got Euro chargers in there. I've got Bose minis in there with the charge, everything else. But yeah. I've also got my Happy Tin. And in my happy tin, the things that make me happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a few bits of pieces. There's a few pieces. Things like headache tablets, which I haven't had to use for ages. I've always got two lamp tips in there. Um, I haven't had to use them for a long time. But you know what's like when you feel a, a cold coming? I, I won't have to go out and get a lamp tip. I've already got one. Um, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and, and it's also got my show mints in there, which are tree ball mints. And they're the last, that's the last thing I do before a show is have a mint. <laughs> and I'm, if I'm having a mint and I know everything is done, the rig set up, yeah. everything's tuned, all the electronics are turned on, nothing's going to fall over. I've got the right clothes on. I'm I'm happiness personified when I'm when I'm sucking on a mint because uh, <laughs> all, 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 all I have to all I have to concentrate on then is, is the show. It's the show. You know, yeah. There, there's mm -hmm. nothing. There's nothing worse than being on stage 
and you're looking over at a, at a, at a, at a symbol arm and you think, is that kind of collapse? Yeah. Or, you or worse, you know, there's no symbol on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It hasn't, that hasn't happened to me, but I have no need to happen. And it's and it's yeah. great. And the same thing with my book with regards to public speaking, you know, work from a list, make sure you've got everything you need. You know, if you're going to if you're going to use a flip chart, if the hotel said they're going to supply a flip chart, take your own anyway, in case they yeah. have to scrap around and try and find their own one. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so, so these the, the things cost pennies because it's worth spending that than being embarrassed by the fact that you haven't got a flip chart. I've seen someone write information on a sheet of A4 he was holding up against a wall because no one had put a flip chart in. Yeah. <laughs> and so, that's where I got that idea from, you know, take your own flip chart. So to, to follow on from that then, what, what about if things don't go right? I mean, I can't imagine there's there's many things that go wrong in, in uh, that because of all your checklists <laughs> and processes and everything else. But what about those days where they do go wrong and it all goes they wrong? They never go wrong, Joe. Everything... <laughs> It's perfect every time. Um, if, if 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 things go wrong, I don't call it going wrong. I call it, oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> so, and, and then then I try and prevent that from happening the next again. One. Yeah. I mean, one thing yeah. that happened, uh, I was doing a show in South Wales. It, it, this was as, as recent as two weeks ago. I was playing drums on Fast Love because I'd, I'd, they don't have percussion on, on, on all of their shows, as I said earlier. Mm. Uh, and the drummer's wife recently had a baby, so he had some he had some time off. And there was a couple of shows they couldn't cover. So I, I covered one of their shows. And uh, George Michael had a massive hit with Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, yeah. which he duetted live with Elton John. Yeah. Uh, it's a phenomenal uh, song and single. The production's amazing on it. Now, on... Don't let the sun go down on me. Um, if everyone, next time you hear it, there's a really impressive drum fill just before the second or third chorus. Uh, to me, that that drum fill is as, as iconic as the In the Air Tonight drum fill that Phil Collins does. Okay, yeah. It's really iconic. So um, the, the song is fairly quiet, but come this drum fill, I'm going from playing really quietly to probably as hard as I'm hitting the kit in the entire gig. As I'm going around the kit to, to sort of to larger drums on my right, and I'm I'm giving this this drum set full the full Monty, and a drumstick breaks clean in half. Oh no! Um, so I mean, I've got spares. I grabbed one, and, and everything was happy. It threw me a little bit, but I thought, what happened there? And I'd realised that the drumsticks I'd using had done two gigs, which is fairly normal. Right. Um, but so now what I, what I do. Um, I I don't whatever if 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 I do drums again on on faster, which I hope I do because it's good fun. Um, I will never start. Don't let the sun go down on me with a, a pair of drumsticks I've used. I'll always start with a new pair. So right. yeah, if, if things happen, I try and minimise the chances of that happening again. Yes. Um, yeah. and and and, it, it, and if and if it means you know the the, the reason I have a specific dr drum drum mat that I mount my drums on. With with they look like clamps, but they're but they're, they're small stops. I've seen drum sets fall off of drum risers, and I've had bass drums move so far in front of me that crew have had to come in and push them back because yeah. they've moved on stage. Um, so I prevent that happening by having my own mat and my own clamps, and you know. So I, all I, all I want to do when I get on stage is play, goof about, throw tambourines up in the air, have a laugh, um, and then get changed and go home. And, and yeah. if, it, if I can, if I can minimise the stress, it, it's a, there is a lot of pressure. There's, you know, if, if, there, if there's four of you on stage, twenty-five percent of the audience are watching you, uh, and and you want it to, you want it to go right every single time. And yeah. when 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 you're public speaking, a hundred percent of the people are watching you, so you want it to go right. So I've, I, I bring the same philosophies into speaking as I do to performing, because I, I believe that, that, that public speaking is very much a performance. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting um, uh, learning from both camps. You know, some of the stuff I've learned through public speaking, I've introduced that now into how I'm playing and vice yeah. versa. So um, the yeah. two marry up quite nicely because it's about performing. It's about keeping mm. you, your audience engaged. Mm hmm. So on that day when you know end the day knowing you've had the chance to live more and that's why I talk about doing more of the things that you want to do. What yeah. have you done? I, I imagine I could probably respond for you, but go on, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I've done nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, um, for me, a perfect day. There's a song in there somewhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a, perf a perfect day is um, 
time with Sarah. Sitting down mm-hmm. at a coffee shop, talking nonsense about nothing in particular. Um, happy days, you know, because I've 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 had we I've probably seen more of Sarah than there's a lot of married couples. She comes to quite a few of the shows, um, and we we sit down and we chat, and she helps out on things. She does uh, helps out with social media, which I'm very interested in. Um, and she helps out with a diary, and she speaks to clients about the bookings, you know, and she gets the industry. And, and it's really complex. You know, we, I, I miss weddings. I miss family weddings for shows, you know, and yeah, um, yeah. birthday parties. I miss birthday parties for shows. But everyone that's known me for so many years, they get it. You know, some people don't, um, but I'm not going to turn down a 33-date tour to go to someone's wedding who I haven't seen for the last two years. No, you know, no, so it's true. um, yeah. and it, it, you just yeah. So for me, a perfect day is sat down with Sarah or some very good friends of ours, Steve and Mandy. We'll sit down, we'll go out for a meal, or we'll just walk around Rochester, or we'll just get hop hop on the train to London and walk around the South Bank, go and have coffee or a, you know something down there, so a meal. But you're generally doing nothing, and I turn my phone off as well when mm. I'm when I'm having when I'm having downtime. You know, it, it it is absolutely off all the time. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. It's been brilliant interviewing you, Phil, and uh, hearing about everything. I just to say, I love the checklists and the processes and everything else. It's been great to hear all about that. So, um, tell people how they can find out more about you and connect with you. Right. I'm going to have put the G, all the addresses on on the links. But on Twitter, I'm Pip Drums, P I P Drums. Uh, Facebook, I'm, I'm. You need to search for Running Drums. One word. There's a lot of Phil Wilsons on Facebook. Um, I actually built my Facebook profile when I was running for the London Marathon when I was training. Um, I'm also on there as Phil Wilson Percussionist. Uh, that's my business page. And on Instagram, I'm also Phil Wilson Percussionist. But uh, there's one of them horrible underscores between Phil uh, Wilson and Percussionist. So, uh, but the, okay. the, the Instagram is, is is the one that I do a lot of because I get a lot of business on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll put all those links on the show notes anyway. So Brilliant. thank you thank for you. joining me in, in amongst your busy schedule. <laughs> That's gone really quickly. Thank you, Joe. All this information is available in the show notes on the website. If you go to powertolivemore.com forward slash, in this case, 90, that's nine zero, you'll be able to see those there. And then, as you know, I've started to share a tool with you each week that I've shared in my newsletter. I didn't put a newsletter out last week, so I don't have a new tool. But this week, the newsletter is going to talk about the roundup, another roundup of tools and apps that I shared last year. So I'm just going to mention a few of those to you now and then I'll do the others next week as part of next week's podcast. So on the newsletter I talked about um, Slack which is a tool that I use with a number of my clients and in some groups that I'm involved in for a way of communicating which is it's a social network so it's a bit like being on a, in a Facebook group but it's actually specifically for the organisation or the group that uh, I'm involved with and it's a really good way of being able to stay in touch to share documents and to really collaborate with people without having to rely on the sort of uh, changes that happen all the time in places like Facebook and LinkedIn around their groups and that sort of thing so I've been using Slack for, for quite a while and if it's um, something if you if you need to communicate with a group of people and you are looking for a way to do that then I definitely recommend checking out slack as an option I'm just currently looking at putting together a new uh, membership site and I'm looking at how I can integrate slack with that rather than using one of the uh, free social networks with their own groups um, slack actually is free um, up to a certain number of messages and that sort of thing but it is only designed to provide a communication tool for you as opposed to offering that as part of a sort of whole host of other things that it does which is I think the issue when you start using the tools that social media uh, platforms give you so that's slack um, and the other one that I use on a regular basis I try and do a bit of it every day is something called quiz IQ that's K wizik.com and it's a site where you can learn and practice 
your languages and they currently I think have I'm doing French and I think they have Spanish and they might have one other language on there and it basically uses artificial intelligence to suggest what you should be learning and then test you on it and then depending on the answers and the results you get on the tests it then throws up either similar questions again until you've really embedded that learning or it comes up with new questions which helps you to learn new uh, areas of language and I found it really useful because I can learn vocabulary by using flashcards and that sort of thing and you know obviously speaking is something else that I try and do on a regular basis but I always find that the the real sort of detail of the grammar is the stuff that I really can't be bothered to learn from a sort of sit down at a desk and read a lesson point of view uh, and it you know it's quite a dry thing to learn and so I've sort of always always struggled with that sort of detail of grammar thing and conjugate, conjugating verbs and all that sort of stuff because I can't find a sort of quick and easy way to learn those. And then I came across quiziq.com and basically, as I say, it asks, it asks you questions and then based on the answers that you give, it then decides what you need to learn and asks you further questions. And so you can use the platform by studying all the lessons that it suggests you study but the way that I'm using it is literally just to do the tests and every time I get questions wrong I click on a link and it tells me what the correct answer was and what the rule is and what I need to know in order to get that right next time and then I get asked the same question again in a later test and then I keep you know by repetition uh, learning these these new things as I go along so I'm actually using it probably not slightly how it's supposed to be used but it's actually having a really good impact for me and that I'm learning things that are really quite complicated uh, but because of repetition I'm learning them but also I'm not having to do it as I said by sitting down and studying per se it's just happening as a result of the technology of AI which is where the system is deciding what I need to learn as a result of what I'm telling it and you know so it's working for me really well so if you're learning French or Spanish and you are looking for something to support that particularly around the detail of the grammar and the uh, verb conjugations and the order of words and all that sort of thing then I really would recommend it so it's quiziq.com k-w-i-z-i-q.com and then the last thing was in the summer I was camping in our caravan um, for quite a few weeks and uh, i had some great success charging my iPad and my iPhone using a portable solar charger and a big pa battery pack. Uh, so one of the, the recommendations in one of the newsletters was exactly that. So if you travel around a lot and you, I don't know, walk or you camp or you, um, you know, spend a lot, lot of time out of doors, then I really would recommend having a look and seeing what portable solar chargers are available because they're much smaller and co compact and you know transportable now uh you know much more so than when i first started using them when i was camping i remember years ago having a, a massive um fold up sort of contraption to to try and get those uh solar rays uh making enough power to charge my phone and it didn't really work most of the time whereas now literally it's um i don't know it's probably only about two or three times a four once once it's unfolded um but actually can charge um you know three things at the same time and you can get things that, that are much smaller or you can even buy things like um rucksacks that have got solar panels built into them so that as you're walking along the sun is going onto the solar panel and then you're charging your phone from there so if as i say if you spend a lot of time out of doors and you need a way to charge your devices then have a look and see what's available uh, nowadays around solar charging i mean the, these things change all the time so you know every six months or so have another look because these things are improving getting smaller and more powerful all the time so those are the tools for this week and again, if you want to get to the show notes for this week's show, then you just need to go to powertolivemore.com forward slash 9090. And we look forward to speaking to you next week. Use your power to live more.